What is the crack, lads? And welcome back to another PES 2013 video. It still doesn't feel right saying that, but we're going to be doing an overlook of the game because this was an incredible, incredible game. And I don't think we realized how good it was until PES 2014 came out. Um, because, man, this was at, this was at its, the, the peak of its powers, I thought, with PES 2013. You can see there that the menus are really decent. The amount of modes and teams and licenses that were in it... Um, was was amazing really and the options that you had in edit mode which we'll get into in a second so for those that are new to PES 2013 or that have never seen PES 2013 before that are new to the eFootball series um this is the foundations that eFootball was built on one of the games like this in the series now I know we could go way back to PES 6 and we will go back and revisit those again a lot of people are asking me to do more old classic content because I think I'm getting more of a buzz out of it lads than than anybody because it's just such a nostalgic kick that uh, that I'm that I'm really just like craving at the moment just to be able to go back and play kind of an offline based game mode. Um, but look at this. I mean, you go through this, go through the stuff. We have a match here with exhibition. We've got rank and match, which was playing against your friends and rivals online. Uh, friendly match lobby was there. Watch exhibition match. You could just watch a match if you wanted to just chill out. Um, if there was no footy on the TV that night, then you had the UEFA Champions League. You had the competition itself. You had the exhibition match as a one-off, and then you could just watch one as well. Same with the Copa Libertadores. You had the competition, the exhibition, and watch one. Um, a football life, which was made up of Master League, Become a Legend, and Master League Online. Now, Master League Online, lads, was, oh my days, that mode was so good. It was absolutely incredible. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I wish the servers were still up, but in fairness, Dream Team has captured that a little bit, Tommy, apart from, you know, all the the massively rated players that you can buy with uh, coins and stuff but master league was where it was that's what we're going to be checking out in the in the series um quite soon and then there was just an assortment of competitions you'd cop you'd online competitions that you could just test yourself with and uh, play against whoever you wanted online community so this one obviously you could join or create communities that you could keep track of all your stats um you could transfer over from community to community there was just so much depth in it man they had a dedicated training mode as well. We'll go into that in a second. They had a performance training and a free training. Um, and then they had edit mode. Information was just for downloading data packs. Obviously, the servers aren't up online anymore, so you can't do that. A gallery for looking at uh, all your stats, your results, your replay playback, which is your saved goals. Um, and then, obviously, all your options and stuff. So there was just so much in it, man. There was so much in PES 2013. And... Like, as we go through this, right, if we go into the edit mode, which I did a video on edit mode, if you haven't checked the intro to the Master League, we're going to be doing. There was just so much editing, like, capabilities that you could do, you know what I mean? You could go into the players, and obviously now we can still do their stats, and we can do the kits, and we can do all that sort of stuff, but you could literally do whatever you wanted to the players. You know, you could change their hair, you could change their face, you could change anything you wanted. As I showed in the last episode, you could leave the, the you know, you could leave their default face, and their inbuilt face, but you could add like random hairstyles to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, lad, it's so funny. Like, it's so wild. But you could add whatever you wanted to add to it. I mean, Baggio's hair there. Um, there was a load of these special ones that were there. And then you could ob obviously just like either change the change the hairstyles. I'm going to be changing the hairstyles quite a bit in Master League. You'll see what I mean. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just like there was so much options there in edit mode that like i just love i used to love coming in and just changing things around every now and again you know just switching things out switching players um like hairstyles and making a story about that or whatever you could do whatever you wanted and obviously you could just go back to the default at any given time but there was just so much options with it you had all your accessories your boots there was a massive selection of boots um now they did bring in something in the master league which will show you that was a bit polarizing at the time i think a lot of people made a huge deal out of it um i actually have those boots from years ago something very similar to like them um and then you had all these like friendship you know you could put the bracelets on and all that sort of stuff there was just a lot of um there was a lot of options that you could do lads to be honest and then the player gloves the under shorts the tape strip style you could actually have as far as i remember you could have the i thought you could have the short shorts you could have the socks long or short or normal long or normal there was no short version i don't think um i thought you could have the shorts 
could you have the shorts tight? I know you could have the shorts tight in some way. Um, but yeah, on the classic teams, they had them. And then obviously you have all your dribbling and all your goal celebrations and all that sort of stuff. The, the player ID was really incredible back here because um, they made a massive focus on it. Um, and then they had slightly different ways of uh, doing, the, doing the players and how they played. So they had like playing styles and then they had like skill styles, skills. So it's amazing to see even back here, they still had Speed Merchant and, you know, they had a lot of the stuff. They had a lot more actually um, kind of like... A variety of of what type of players would uh would pick you know you you had your classic number 10 anchorman trickster all that sort of stuff but you had it um you had different ones as well like darting run and enforcer was there free roman obviously would be something like Messi um that has a free free reign of anywhere on the pitch um but going back out into this lads and as i said we will be starting a master league so make sure and check that out in the even the training mode like it was so in depth you had a performance training mode um, I think I've changed or I will be changing the buttons to suit eFootball because I am playing on a PS5 pad obviously a PS5 pad works all you have to do is connect it uh, by a USB to the PS3 first register it as a wireless device with another controller and then you're free to go you can just play it as wirelessly as, uh, as possible but um, yeah there was just so much in this so these were like challenges that you could do when you got a rating off it uh, the new game features deft touch dribbling and double touch both are easy to pull and come uh, in very handy when trying to beat opposition defenders master it and train and make these move yours there was a load of stuff in it lads that you could add there was a load of stuff that you could add to your arsenal um, by pressing R1 you can make use of deft touches to dribble without changing the direction R1 when dribbling I think I have the buttons changed so um, or maybe I don't I'm not too sure no I've done I've that. that's it done so that's it there did I do it oh I just I don't need to get I don't oh I did it yeah I just needed to pass him you clear the first one next and then you can go on and i remember playing my friends in this spending like literally spending hours doing this genuinely spending hours doing this these tricks and these moves and everything like that the double touch was still actually very very uh, much the same as it is now um it was it was very op i remember online um i'm gonna have trouble doing this one now as well because i need to just be patient Oh, absolutely rinsed him. Rinsed him on the third time of asking. But yeah, obviously the controls and stuff aren't going to be, uh, you know, as tight as eFootball offline. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything else is very similar. It was kind of built on the foundations of this. Uh, I used to love practicing the freeze. And then you had obviously all these, you know, challenges that you could set yourself or whatever, because there was like scoring and stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously if, if you wanted to improve at the game, this is where you do it so yeah there was just so much man there was so much in this and obviously we will be taking a look at master league as well but um even the presentation of the matches we're going to go into a match here just a regular match um an exhibition match and we're going to go into real madrid versus let's see let's go real madrid versus chelsea um like the menus and everything were really really nice and really slick you know they were really nicely laid out yeah it was very boxy and very square and stuff like that but it was very nice in my opinion you could change the kits very easily just by flicking that and it changed the overlay of the home um you know so we can do that and that uh which was really nice obviously you could pick the stadium you could pick whichever stadium you wanted there was a load of stadiums there Eddie had um these were most of the squads then are the teams that you'd pick for the bundesliga matches the premier there was just like default ones that you could use for the premier for other teams that didn't have one um but yeah there was just so many stadiums there was so much going on with it there was a lot of content in it even the san siro here looks incredible um yeah there was just a lot of options man there was a lot of options and obviously then as well you had superstar top player you had all these uh options as well same as normal the game plan looked kind of similar to what it was like in um i don't know kind of like for the last few years of pez before they moved to that um where it was kind of like flicking on and flicking off and you had the arrows and stuff but yeah i mean it was it was nice you had your form arrows you had your players you press triangle you get a nice little look at the player there um you know you could cycle through that but yeah, it was nice. I mean, I liked it. I loved PES 2013, lads. I actually loved it so much, genuinely. I thought it was one of the best PES games ever. And a lot of people probably complained about it at the time, but it's like, when you come back and play it now, yes, the gameplay is not as good as, as you would expect it to be, um, or it probably is as you expect it to be. 
you know, it's a game that's nearly 10 years old playing on a PS3. Um, but I think because it's a little bit harder to get, unless you have your PS3 and a copy of PES 2013, you can't pop it into a PS4, you know what I mean? You have to play it on a PS3. So I do think that it is a little bit kind of like harder to go back and play PES 2012, PES 2013, but they're incredible games. Um, I think, you know, they had, they had the full package back then at, at that stage, man. Like, I really enjoyed playing them. Um, obviously, you're going to have a couple of technical difficulties and the graphics aren't online with where you'd want it to be. But, man, I smashed this game. I genuinely smashed so many hours of this game. Let me know in the comments below that's your favourite PES 2013 memory. Or even if there's a game that you prefer, you know, did you prefer PES 2012 ahead of it? Because, for me, PES 2013 was the pinnacle of this generation of PES games. Um, you know, before they moved to Fox proper and everything was just kind of like really enjoyable, I think. Um, now, I did love PES 2016 as well and PES 5 I loved as well. They would probably be my, my main ones. You know, PES 4, PES 5, PES 13, PES 16. Um, they would have been the ones that I had. Now, when you think and you look at this here now, like this would probably get criticized now because of the rainbows under the players and stuff and, you know, things like that. I know you could turn them off, but... That was kind of you can see the movement is a little bit um, is a little bit kind of lo like more mechanical and that there's no real animations between the players like running and the players actually catching the ball or whatever um, in their like possession. But yeah, I mean, it was fun, man. It was fun. That was the biggest thing about it. I mean, it was just a fun gameplay. It had huge issues online, obviously. Who doesn't remember Van der Merch, lad? Seriously, he was a demon online. And he was, like, so cheap. And, uh, like, everyone had him. And nobody, you know, nobody wanted to um, to lose. I'm going to sweat it across my first goal. Oh, what a save. Kaka! But he does. The celebration comes in as well. Kaka! A little bit of slowdown there, as you can see. Again, it had a couple of technical issues. Um... But yeah, I think, lads, as well, you would pick up a copy of this in CEX or whatever, like a physical copy. I think I have mine there somewhere. I'm not too sure where it is. But it's there somewhere anyway, the boxed edition of it. Um, yeah, I have it here somewhere. In PES 13. Yeah, so that's it. That is PES 13 there. Um, the box. I think I have my other... I have them all there, actually, all the old games. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely... Check it out, obviously, and uh, let me know what you guys think. There was a lot of really good stuff about this to love, but... Yeah, we're going to end it there, Les, just as a bit of a revisited on PES 2013. You can see a lot of the features in it. Like, obviously, the players kind of look like a bit like Frankenstein now compared to the movement and the fluidity of eFootball uh, 22 or even, you know, FIFA or, like, what's come after it, like, even PES 16. Um... But still, I mean, it looked fairly fluid, like you can see there with the double touch and the, the touches and stuff. It's very mechanical and stuff, especially yeah. offline. It was a little bit quicker online. And then you had no real, um, you had no real kind of uh, like stand-up defense game. It was just more kind of about blocking the passing lanes and slide tackling. Absolute butcher bay there from Zabi Lonzo. But yeah, lads, we're going to end it there. We'll let, the, we'll let Chelsea take this free kick. Uh, we'll do manual goalkeeping as well, if we can. It's letting me do it. Lampard might slot this home. That is it, lads, for PES 2013 revisited. Let me know your favorite thoughts on the series on the on the game. And let me know your favorite game in the series. We'll be back quite soon. Peace.